and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting uh, Australian Indian Radio's uh, daily life updates coming to you from our studios here uh, in Brisbane. Well, it's a wonderful day out there if you look out the windows today. Yes, uh, it is just amazing what uh, Brisbane winters can be like and they are uh, amazing. But let's have a quick look at the weather forecast for the rest of Monday. Yes, it is Monday. So the maximum of 22, partly cloudy and a chance of rain is 0%, so zilz percent chance of rain. Brisbane area, partly cloudy with patches of light frost in the west early in the morning which we have already seen and we got some reports of that as well uh, and light winds the fire danger fire danger is low to moderate uh, and sun protection is recommended from now till about 1 p.m and the uv index has come down a bit it's come down one notch it's come down to three so it was four last week and it's gone down to three. So, you know, you can be in the sun for a little bit longer before you start to burn. But as always, sun protection is, of course, always recommended. Uh, and the fire, uh, you know, with the fire, the precautions still needs to be taken. It is very, very, uh, you know, careful consideration that we should take when we be going out camping or doing anything. Talking about camping, you know, we went out bush and I will bring that report to you uh, further down the track in this week uh, when I compile uh, the report from uh, the hinterland tour of ours, which is w wonderful to see. Well, right now, let's have a quick look at uh, the numbers, the numbers as they stand at this point in time. So, uh, you know, when you look at uh, Queensland, the confirmed cases so far of coronavirus is 1067 and the recovery uh, is at 1055 and the recorded deaths are six whole of australia the confirmed cases are 8449 and the recovery 7399 with 104 deaths recorded worldwide the numbers as we saw in the weekend that you know there was the largest one day increase lately. So that was, you know, uh, of course, taking US and Brazil and India all into account. So that is, you know, the numbers are still growing out there. So when you look at Australia, when you look at Queensland, I think we have done well. I know the measures are tough sometimes, but uh, they are there for a reason. You know, they're there to protect us. So we must always observe those uh, rules. So worldwide, 11.3 million you know a while back we were talking about aid then we were talking about the numbers might go up to 10 million today 11.3 million with a recovery of 6.11 million and 532,000 deaths so you know that's a lot of people who have passed away so today is a very very special day as well uh, in Brisbane we are celebrating the 80th birthday of uh, this story bridge we will have a look at that just in a minute but before that here's a message from our premier community sport is back we know how important community sport is it's uh, the lifeblood of of communities um, it's where people come together and children get a chance to go out and uh, enjoy time with one another uh, socializing and also playing sport we are launching our Fair Play vouchers $150 and of course they will be open from tomorrow. Uh, there's over $10 million worth, um, thousands of families will benefit. These Fair Play vouchers encourage uh, young people to get the equipment they need. It might be a jersey, it might be help with public transport or getting to and from venues. We will provide 73,000 Fair Play vouchers to Queensland families. So eligibility is for Queensland parents who uh, have a health care card, a pension card, or who find themselves now on JobSeeker. It's part of our $51.3 million sport and recreation restart plan. We're supporting clubs with a $2,000 grant to get them COVID safe back up and running. Now we're supporting families with these $150 vouchers for eligible kids so that they can come and join a club and that's a great initiative there from uh, uh, Queensland government. You know, we really, really need to get back on track and get back on uh, track safely. Uh, when we mean track, you know, 
back on track, yes, on the sporting tracks as well. Now for our lead story for today, uh, which is the Story Bridge. So the story about the Story Bridge. What is the story, the story behind the Story Bridge? So let's take a very, very quick look at uh, Story Bridge. So as we know, uh, you know, the Story Bridge, how did it come about? You know, it just didn't come about itself. So have you ever wondered how the iconic Story Bridge of Brisbane came to life? Such a large piece of metal did not just happen overnight, but it did change the way that life in Brisbane and surrounding areas has been lived forever. We are here to tell the tale of the journey that brought this and erected this bridge. It all started back in 1925. So let me tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, as you can see from those uh, slides that I have compiled, some of them are uh, from our little cafe downstairs. Uh, and in, in that slide, you will also see the ticket that was used before when it was started, the toll that people had to pay to get through. So there you are, that's a toll thing. So Brisbane's historical landmark, the Story Bridge, is magically positioned over Brisbane River and the most of inner suburbs of Kangaroo Point and New Farm. Story uh, Adventure Climb also, uh, which is uh, a feature of Brisbane right now, you know, it offers 360 degree views of spanning Morton Bay and East, the Glasshouse Mountains to our north and hinterlands. There are many things that happen to make this bridge one of the best places to visit in Brisbane. The first in 1925 after the Brisbane City Council was established, a committee was set uh, so that uh, the fact that there were no, not enough bridges crossing the Brisbane River, not being able to cross the giant river proved itself a, a great debacle. So construction of the Story Bridge did not start for another 10 years. So the committee took about 10 years to get through. Though, since the state government refused to fund such an expensive bridge. So there was always that tussle between the state government and the local government. So without going into too much detail, let's look at some of the important details. Uh, the consulting engineer chosen for the project was Queenslander Dr. John Bradley. Dr. Bradley had been chief engineer on Sydney Harbour Bridge, which was completed in 1932. The bridge commenced construction on 24th May 1935. Construction uh, uh, took five years, one year longer than planned due to steel shortage. So even in those days, it was very, very hard to plan any project and complete that on time. During construction, the bridge was referred to as the Central Bridge, the Brisbane River Bridge, the King George and Fifth Memorial Bridge. So these were some of the names the Jubilee Bridge of Story Place. Later, in 1937, the government chose the Story Bridge after J.D. Story. The Story Bridge opened for operation on 6th July, 1940. So that makes it 80 years. Uh, at the time of opening in 1940, the Story Bridge was Australia's second largest bridge. Exceeded the Sydney Harbour Bridge, it was the seventh largest bridge of its kind in the world. The Story Bridge, are you ready? How much did it cost? So in those days of pound, shilling and pence, it cost 1,492,000 uh, pounds. So 1,492,000 pounds, which today is $327 million, which was under budget. So it was, uh, well, it was under budget, but it went over time. Seven years later, the state government sold the Story Bridge to Brisbane City Council for 750 pounds. During construction, 198 men were employed at the metal wax, 176 at the construction site, and as well as 60 designers, engineers, and surveyors. Tragically, four men lost their lives during the construction. So I take my heads off to the engineers and, survive, uh, and the surveyors. It is, you know, I, when you look at uh, construction, measurement and surveying, getting it to the right points and places, that is just amazing feat. Uh, when you look at the tools of the trade that they had uh, and the equipment that had, they had at the disposal at those times. So it is, it is amazing to see that. 
the bridge itself, let's look at the bridge. So the bridge is 1,072 meters long from southern to northern piers. The river span is 282 meters. The bridge summit is 74 meters to the ground, similar in height to a 22-story building, and we are sitting at 29th floor from where we are broadcasting. The width of the bridge is 24 meters, including footpaths. The river clearance at low tide is 35 meters or 10 stories. The four main steel bearings each weigh 36 tons. How did they get it up there in those days? It is just amazing. A little bit of comparison. In 1935, a contract was signed for Evan Deacon's Honeybrook Constructions Propriety Limited for the construction of the bridge. The bridge was constructed in five stages. 39,100 cubic meters were excavated for foundations. And there you are. It is on a very solid foundation, hence it has stood this time of test. So, a hole as large as 23 Olympic swimming pools. 41,250 cubic meters of concrete were used, which equates to about 8,200 truckloads. 12,000 tons of structural steel was used. 1,650 tons of reinforcing steel. 1,500,000 rivets. So that's the main thing that's holding it. You know, in those days, uh, the technology of you know using those rivets, uh, and there is a great detail. If you look uh, look it up, you will find, and that is quite amazing. If you are that way inclined to find out about that, and if this kind of construction uh, in those days does fascinate you, it does fascinate me. And uh, uh, you know, you can do a bit of research and find out the amazing work that was done back then. The Story Bridge is the largest single bridge designed, fabricated and constructed in Australia by Australians. Brisbane's Story Bridge opened for operation on July 6, 1940. This day came five years after construction commenced and 14 years after initial recommendations for a river crossing in Kangaroo Point vicinity. Essentially, the Story Bridge was one of then the government's three major public works projects creating years of employment for many men during the Great Depression. So they talk about the Great Depression at this time, it's similar to what we are going to now, you know, with the COVID. Today, the Story Bridge lends itself to be one of the best places to visit in Brisbane. And I'll tell you what, every morning when I go for my work, it, it amazes me, never ceases to amaze me with the different shades of lights and everything. And, and just, you know, early in the morning when the sun is rising with that beautiful morning breeze with the river, uh, and that, you know, it's just amazing with the, all the different colors that it puts on. And every day, even though you might take the photo from the same vantage point, it is different each and every day. And it is wonderful to see that all, all, all the time. So that is uh, the lead story for today, the story about the Story Beach. If you didn't know, now you do. So it is wonderful to see that today we are celebrating, and as we know, our Lord Mayor uh, and Councillor uh, uh, Krista Adams, they all did the early morning climb. I hope it wasn't too cold for them this morning. Uh, I could feel the little bit of chill this morning, as we know, this is the peak uh, sort of winter here in Brisbane. But again, uh, you know, on the river, you can always feel that warmth coming from the river as well. So it is never too cold out there. But once you walk up the alleyway and into the streets, uh, the tunnel between the buildings, you know, then you can feel the chill coming up your spine as, as the wind tunnels through those buildings uh, straight onto you. But right on the river, on the walk, it is still quite pleasant. Still good to see all our lo locals and all our normal everyday workers, you know, nodding to each other, saying hello, hi, good day, and, you know, making a small comment about how the view is today. Uh, and sometimes even comparing our shots just to see, you know, ah, okay, I got this one from this point. So, you know, it's wonderful to see that uh, happening uh, right there in, in Brisbane. But right now, let's go to a commercial break. <laughs> Globnet Reality Globnet Reality is a real estate agent from 1989 and is now a real estate agent. Usha Chandra, Globnet director, gives his clients and ethical services. If you want to put Brisbane property in Brisbane and you want to manage your property professionally, 
तो आप आज ही कांटेक्ट कीजिए उषा चंद्रा को लैंडलाइन नंबर है थ्री और मोबाइल नंबर है जीरो और आप प्रॉपर्टी की अधिक जानकारी और करंट अपडेट्स के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट पे लॉगिन कर सकते हैं हमारी वेबसाइट है www.globenetreality.com.au Globenet Reality आपका अपना लोकल रियल एस्टेट एजेंट है हमारा पता है Globenet Reality शॉप नंबर फाइव टू टू एट वन सैंडकेट रोड बुंदल क्विंसलैंड ग्लोबनेट रियलिटी रियल एस्टेट इज अवर वर्ल्ड and real estate definitely is the world well right now let's go and have a look at uh, our uh, news in brief uh, so like a natural disaster queenslanders are using more antidepressants as doctors blame pandemic stress so people are under stress and you can feel that you can see that happening all around uh, you in know, of the the look on many people's face as well and i'll talk about that a little bit later on so there is stress in and out there have been a sharp increase in antidepressant use this year so this uh, data would have been collected by the sales over the counter the pharmacist and also from the gps making the report with doctors saying that more people are understandably needing extra support to get through the difficulties of pandemic so that's what's happening with the uh, uh, current situation new south wales uh, former government staff are charged and counting continues in the tight eden munaro race where we now labor has won that we will go to that news in 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 a minute as well as we know that uh, uh, the staffers many times they get themselves in trouble and many times they get the politicians in trouble as well by doing the wrong things so you know who knows uh, what goes through their minds when they do things like that the six roads where canberra drivers are most likely to hit a roof Winter is usually collision season in Canberra when kangaroos come closer to the road in search of food but a handful of factors have turned 2020 upside down as we now the airport being closed everyone's using the road uh, you know to Canberra so that's been a heavily heavily very heavily used uh, road with that uh, bottleneck uh, happening if near monaro so that had been one of the election uh, campaign uh, key issues there as well When a brain injury shattered my world I started self meditating with nature and I'll tell you what you know connecting with nature is the best thing you can ever do as we did this weekend I suffered a mild traumatic brain injury when I was hit by a car while riding my bike I was unable to read write or listen to music or look after my kids then i made an amazing discovery that changed my life that is a story to to be followed up and it is wonderful to see that this kind of therapeutic and connection with nature and meditation can always bring you back to life uh, you know when you think that nothing can be done so we are there with those kind of research as well on an everyday meditation exercise and the right frame of mind can always help you we are stuck with george up the top they are looking at us as the black life matter movement continues to draw attention to deaths in custody and indigenous representation within judicial system it also ignited debate over whether memorials commemorating the colonial historical figures should be removed and canberra is no exception as we have seen uh, you know throughout the world so many statues being pulled down thrown into the river so what's going to happen to king george in canberra time will tell a momentous thing a everyday australian taking part in human trial of coronavirus vaccine wow so you know australia could be leading the way one of us world's uh, first human trials of the vaccine for coronavirus is underway in australia as healthy volunteers put themselves forward so you know these are real heroes who are putting themselves forward for this test as as we know without the tests we would never know how it's going to work what its reactions would be and and more importantly what the side effects could be so you know heads off to these volunteers who have come forward to volunteer for this test aboriginal kids don't need to be fixed and learn from indigenous children in order to help them 
Lessons that can be learned from Jijong Hussain, a young Aboriginal uh, boy, on how to change the education system. That book there is amazing. Uh, you know, it's amazing what he has put together. And I think it, time now is right. And I think people are more receptive to these ideas and more education in this field needs to be done. As we know, it was their land. It will always be the land. And we need to now do whatever we can to help and support our indigenous people. Pandemic forces autism uh, workshops online and some months can't be happier. There are so many uh, classes which are happening online. Mothers of kids with autism say juggling busy lives make getting to workshops really tricky. And a shift online during the COVID-19 pandemic has proved invaluable. And that could be true, that is true as well. Uh, you know, I myself used to go to a rehab um, and I have stopped doing that, uh, you know, since the uh, uh, clinic closed. So uh, they are open, but, you know, many times finding the time every morning to go there, come back. Now that you can, you know, just uh, go online and do your exercises, it saves you so much time, traveling time, finding the parking out there, putting the tickets on the dashboard, coming in there, changing rooms and out. So all that downtime, so there's so much downtime that happens with those kind of, I'm not saying they are bad, they are always very good, you know, nothing more better than, you know, being in a clinic itself. But, you know, if you can follow that, uh, and that with, with discipline, those exercises and do it at home, you know, you could actually do it a lot better than uh, what you can do by going out there. If you don't do that today, is a child going to die? Frontline child safety workers, steep, you know, and they work out. Now, this is a report that's been done by ABC. You must look at this report when they go behind the scene of Queensland's child protection workers who talk of mistakes, near misses and see a luck in calling lifeline. So, uh, you know, when you, uh, there are many things that we are probably on a day-to-day -day basis unaware of, but people who are dealing with this and when the ABC went back to us to try and find out about it, what Queensland's child protection workers are going through. And many times they think that should they call lifeline or not, that is, if they don't, will a child die? So, you know, it's that kind of decision when, when someone's life depends upon your judgment on what you're going to do. So how coronavirus lockdown inspired ABC's first Instagram live show. As we know, with the coronavirus, so many online shows have, have begun. And many people have taken uh, to the streaming platforms, many different streaming platforms that are available to get the message out there across. I mean, look at us, you know, our, our life, daily live stream, which I must say has really taken up uh, with the number of views increasing every day uh, and the relevance of it also and the wonderful feedback that we have been getting from everybody out there. It is wonderful to see that. So we will keep going with that and of course, uh, we are only as good as uh, your suggestions and feedback. So, you know, if there's any changes that you would like to see, we are quite open to suggestions. We will uh, incorporate those ones. We try, we endeavor every day, we research a little bit more every day to try and see how we can make this better, how it can be more pleasant, how can it be a better viewing and listening uh, uh, experience for all of you who jo join in with us. So it is wonderful to see that. So journalist Compass host Kumi Taguchi has extensive experience working in television, but producing a show for Instagram from a home took some getting used to. Yes, it does. There are so many things that you need to get used to, uh, you know, projecting your voice, sitting in the right place, making sure that the frames are right, making sure that your material have been ready and queued up. Uh, and that is a big part, a big portion of time. Uh, uh, it takes you longer to get all the material together than to just go and host it. So hosting is easy part. But getting all the relevant material together in the given time so that you can't do it one or two days before unless it's a feature, which you can do. But if you're looking at current affairs and news, you can only just do it just before the show. So that way you become and you keep relevant. But that also, you know, brings about many challenges which you have to face. Well... IFL, you know, reaches desperation point as footy leaves Victoria. 
Victoria, as we now has been faced with this uh, pandemic and the uh, way it's been managed uh, and some of the areas where the outbreaks have just gone out of control. No football in Victoria for at least another month means an unprecedented IFL season has gone to a new low level. And, uh, well, it's always been a high-flying ball, that game, but it's gone to a very, very low level. And it is not a good sight to be seen. But what do you do? This is the sign of times, and that's how things are happening at that point in time. Now, very quickly, to go to the global uh, area. Death toll rises uh, to 20 in Japan. Uh, and more rain and landslides are expected. Rescue efforts continue as people in uh, Kumato, Kuwamoto uh, prefecture prepare for heavy rainfalls and landslides, which authorities are urging residents to remain vigilant. So even though they are asked to remain vigilant, you know, what do you do if your house just collapses all of a sudden? Well, uh, you know, you can be prepared and move to upper grounds, but as you know, the, under those extreme conditions, it is very, very hard. Well, talking about uh, uh, the results, the election results that we talked about uh, in Monaro. So let's have a quick look at what actually happened there and look at the results before we go to India. But first, let's have a look quickly at the results in Eden Monero. Labor has held on to the bellwether seat with no swing against it and almost the same result in 2PP terms that it recorded at the 2019 federal poll. It was a close contest. Labor recorded 50.58% of the 2PP vote and the Liberals 49.42%. A swing against Labor of just 0.27%. This is despite the retirement of popular local member Mike Kelly. Given the scandals Labour endured during the campaign, with the branch stacking saga in Victoria, the allegations of foreign interference in the ASIO investigation in New South Wales, and given just how well Scott Morrison is doing nationally, this is really quite a remarkable result for Labour. It's not one that even Anthony Albanese expected. Here was Anthony Albanese with his candidate, and. Now MP-elect Christy McBain today. Uh, to quote uh, Matt Johnson from the, the, this is the day when Christy McBain's life will really change. It'll change for the better and she'll change Australia for the better. I congratulate Christy McBain on a fantastic victory in Ed Monero. Labor's win will embarrass some in the coalition who are predicting publicly a Liberal victory. If you were watching Sky, you would have seen New South Wales national leader, Nationals leader John Barillaro say this last night. On those numbers, and Carabar, that South Queanbeyan area, is a, a tough area for the coalition. Uh, I think once you add that into the pre-poll, I, 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 I'll call it Libs of one tonight. And he went on to confidently predict that Liberals would... Uh, would win the seat. And of course he was wrong. Labor frontbencher and leader of the right faction in New South Wales, Joel Fitzgibbon, also got it wrong this morning when he described it as an ugly win for Labor. It's a bit of an ugly win for us, uh, I can see, but it's a win just the same. It was a difficult election. So, ladies and gentlemen, we leave that there as we know that uh, Labor did win that seat and it is uh, a Labor win. Uh, and uh, we know that there have been lots of talks in the politics uh, lately and of course about the treasurer of the, uh, will be resigning soon as well. We'll bring an update on that probably later in the week. Right now, let's go to Leh Ladakh. Uh, as we know, that is the LOC, that is where the conflict between the uh, Indian border troops and the ch Chinese border troops took place a few weeks back and uh, the tensions have been rising. Prime Minister Modi visited Leh Ladakh there and he addressed the troops there. The speech is in Hindi, uh, but we'll play a little bit of that uh, so that we can see his presence and what it feels and what it means to the soldiers up there. Aapka ye hosla, aapka shaurya, aur maa bharti ke maan samman ki raksha ke liye, 
आपका समर्पण और तुलनीय है आपकी जीवड़ता भी दुनिया में किसी से भी कम नहीं है जिन कठिन परिस्थितियों में जिस ऊंचाई पर आप मां भारती की ढाल बनकर के उसकी रक्षा करते हैं उसकी सेवा करते हैं उसका मुकाबला पूरे विश्व में कोई नहीं कर सकता है आपका साहस उस ऊंचाई से भी ऊंचा है जहां आप तैनात हैं a very highly motivating speech there by prime minister modi uh, at lai ladak addressing the troops out there uh, praising the troops for their bravery and uh, what they are doing uh, for their nation for the motherland uh, that their efforts would never go unseen or unrecognized uh, you know and his uh, thanking them and praising them so there you are ladies and gentlemen uh, that was uh, prime minister modi uh, at uh, lai ladak uh, the loc up there right now uh, we'll finish off today's uh, section with the upcoming events have a quick look at uh, the program so gurdwara programs as we said have begun once again uh, so you can start going to the gurdwara and enjoying your longer a uh, free food and uh, grocery pick up and delivery service by brisbane sikh temple is still happening hindu helpline the number is there please contact them if you need to help anybody brisbane chapter of vedanta center wonderful programs there and they also streaming a lot of programs online in you know, sahyog brisbane is a joint effort of many of the community organizations stand by support after suicide if you ever need that it is another free consultation which is wonderful to see young professional young sikh professional networks online services are still happening bal sanskar can online hindu dharma classes for children and of course the bsk 2020 cup so ladies and gentlemen with that i need to say goodbye from this segment and uh, uh, thank you all for joining us please spread the word around uh, you know the more people we get listening in and the more feedback we get the better we can make this show for you and thanks to everyone who tuned in to our very impromptu uh, live broadcast last night uh, because it was guru purnima and of, of course all guru purnima we have the asu babu memorial concert uh, and this year because of covid-19 we couldn't do that so we played glimpses of 2012 asu babu memorial concert it's a concert uh, which is uh, by the students of asu babu memorial a school run by saint flinel and we always support that so i said it's guru purnima we are not holding that first uh, uh, concert this year but we have glimpses and as i said last night that from our archives we will bring to you so many different events that we have uh, over the years which we have collected uh, the challenge is got getting into the archives finding those ones and bringing them out but we will not stop we will do that we will go through our archives bring one by one so many different uh, in a programs that took place in the past many people who have uh, are newcomers to brisbane can get to see and find out what brisbane was like before what our community was doing there's so a look at glimpses of whatever community has been doing before where it has got to now uh, many of the things that we enjoy today have been the very hard work and struggle of many of our pioneers who paved the path for us today it becomes very easy to start things but in those days it was very very hard but you know heads off to all of those who did that and set the path for us so ladies and gentlemen with that i need to say goodbye so until tomorrow be good we'll see you then